Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm down here in Los Angeles this week for E3 2016. And what am I expected to see at E3? Well, lots of virtual reality games and some hardware. So I'm about to jump into the demo with Manus VR. They're a company making VR gloves for hand and finger tracking to work with the HTC Vive. They have their latest prototype in a demo, so let's go check it out. All right, Martin, it's great to meet you, and thanks for giving us this demo of Manus VR. Um, you guys have been working on this for a long time, and the idea is to put, uh, give your hands some presence in virtual reality. Um, and you have these gloves you guys have developed. Can you explain how these gloves work? Yeah, so we've been around now for closely two years, and uh, we started out with making gloves for the VR market. That was our, our goal was to put hands in VR. Mm -hmm. That was our mission. So. What these gloves do is they track the orientation of the hand and then the bending of each finger. Mm. And in this version, it's just one flex sensor that tracks the average bend of the finger. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about all the things we have in development later on. But for this version, just flex sensors, orientation of the hand. And that gives you all the data you need from the hand itself. To build a skeletal model of your hand, the hand's a pretty complex object. You have a lot of bones, a lot of joints in here. Indeed. And uh, how are you modeling that? I mean, you think that just one more rotation, rotation movement, so basically your wrist movement, mm -hmm. and one bending motion, that's enough to simulate like a grabbing motion? Yeah, so what we wanted to do was um, make it easy for game developers and also make everything from a cost perspective on consumer level. Mm. So that we simplified on what is the minimal data that you would need for exact hand interactions. Um, for this uh, version, we, we went to the GDC to validate if this glove that we've made fit that use case, if game developers found it interesting enough to work with that. They did find it interesting enough. There's gonna be a few extras that are gonna be in the developer kit that's coming out later this year. And that's gonna add another joint in the calculation. So this does average bend of the finger with just one sensor, and then we're gonna do two sensors. So we can differentiate between doing this and this movement. And then we have 10 joints for the finger and the orientation of the uh, palm of the hand. Can and you talk a little bit about the sensor itself and what type of sensor it is and how is it pulling that average bend? Yeah, so it's a resistance sensor. So it measures the resistance and that increases um, yeah, depending on how far you bend it. And we just use that data to, uh, to calculate the, the, uh, yeah, so the bend of the finger, the angle. In which and the you're finger. assuming uh, like average length of a finger, and so that's where all the joints would be. That's where all, like your, the three joints of a thumb or a next finger would be based on the average length and how much resistance is there. Yeah. Okay, you're not pinpointing the knuckles. Uh, no, um, that's something that we might want to do uh, as a sort of calibration step. So the gloves are going to be calibrated once they leave the factory and that's going to be an average setting. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, it gives a good experience to the average user. But of course, finger lengths and all those things, the hands are complicated, as you said. So we might want to do sort of a sh short calibration step just to get the finger lengths and to save that as a user profile so the user can use that for every game they're going to start up from that point. You're also designing Menace VR to work specifically with the HTC Vive system. So when Valve brought out the Vive last year with the Vive controllers, which you guys have a, as a part of the system, hand presence was already a big part of their design. You know, with the Vive controllers, some games simulate hand presence, even though your hands are holding an object with squeezes and with the triggers. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're putting the Vive controller in an interesting spot. So where do you have it attached in your system? Yeah, so it's placed on the wrist because we need positional tracking. And um, yeah, you might say you just need to track the, uh, yeah, so the glove itself. But it's interesting to put it on the wrist because you get all these lateral movements as well. And you can use this data also, um, as we've shown in a short YouTube video we have, uh, to calculate where the elbow and the shoulders are. So doing whole arm tracking. And that is basically everything that we need. So sort of positional tracking on the wrist. And we like to use the Vive for that as it gives, in our opinion, the best tracking that is available now for consumer VR. But we are open to work with any 
type of platform, any type of positional tracking. Right, so all you really need is one point of positional tracking on the arm and that wrist, the, the, the forearm here gives you, knowing where the forearm is, then you can extrapolate, of course, the wrist is gonna be there. Of course, in relation, yeah. your finger is gonna be here. So you don't need actual positional tracking on the gloves themselves. No. They're in relation to each other, but it's good enough then that your hands can be, um, can be seen in VR. Now the whole idea of hand presence, it's there are almost two schools of thought in it because with the Vive controllers themselves, you can pick up objects and you get like a haptic, an actual object you're feeling. Mm -hmm. With the Manus gloves and other forms, um, when you, you can just you can see your hand and that can be accurate, but you don't get haptic feedback. So what type of experiences can you design when your hands are in VR like that? Yeah, that, that's what we find really interesting. When we started working with the gloves and especially once we had the HTC Five, we could do real positional tracking. It's, uh, for, for me, it was the first time playing Job Simulator with our gloves and the controllers on the wrist. It's changing from having the controller in your hand to having your actual hand there. And then there's this point where you have to push the microwave. Mm -hmm. And the sort of visual feedback that you get from pushing it with your own hand sort of feels, makes that experience much more real, much more realistic. So I think visual feedback already solves a lot of the feedback issues. There, there's, a vibration motor in there to do indications of when you're touching objects. Um, so that all combined, I think that just gives a really lifelike experience that makes it much more immersive. And that's what I find really interesting in this whole VR space is making it as immersive as possible. Um, and it opens up to a whole experience where you have gesture-based complex gesture-based experiences, whether that's doing magic tricks or playing a piano. It's, it seems like that's where we really want VR to be going, and mm -hmm. it's difficult to do when you're approximating your finger movements by holding a controller, Indeed. any yeah. any type of controller. Yeah, so there, there we do a little differentiation because you have either, uh, you can do gesture-based controls. That's one direction you can go in using our gloves. But for us, the more interesting point is if you do really physics-based interaction. Mm. Because um, gesture based, you could pick up a glass just by, uh, you picked up the fireflies, um, just, just by putting your hand out and clenching your fist and that's then a gesture that you want to grab it. Right. But it's much more interesting if you can just use your fingers and really accurately uh, yeah, move that butterfly around or, or pick a bridge part and, and turn it around um, as a sort of uh, yeah, physics object rather than an uh, object that you are colliding with will make it a lot more interesting. And those interactions become less binary when you actually have some hand presence. So you mentioned you know, Job Simulator and getting your games working with developers like that. You're working with developers who have some of the early uh, Manus VR gloves right now, yeah. but the VR market's gonna be big. You know, there's gonna be PlayStation, yeah. there's gonna be Vive, people have, a lot of people have the Oculus already. You know, are you working with developers to make sure that their, their implementation isn't gonna be the only means that you know, this can fit alongside those other s modes of interaction? Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that we keep in the back of our minds is that we are designing our SDK in such a way that it can easily be swapped to a different set of controllers and a different uh, way of interacting without limiting the game design choices. Of course, a game specifically designed for Manus, uh, mm -hmm. uh, real physics implementation. That's of course, for us, that's, that's the highest level that we can get those games on. But that shouldn't break down once people just want to use the controllers. It should work either way. Right, and even since you know in the past year we've seen hand models being implemented in things like Leap Motion, mm -hmm. which is more it's not it's more not an optical but it's a, a visual field of view system to map your hands. What do you think about that, and how can that live alongside what you guys are doing? Yeah, so uh, that's that's pretty interesting because we've also used the Intel RealSense camera, for instance, and also Leap Motion just to track the wrist, mm -hmm. uh, as earlier said. Um, but the thing is with uh, the, those camera-based solution is, there's, there's two real big problems. It's field of view, that's an issue, and occlusion. So when you put your fingers together or occlude one hand with the other. So they could work together in the sense that they track where the wrist is located and we do the really tight finger articulations. That, that is a definitely a way that they could coexist and work together to make one unison experience. But you, to us, our opinion, you do really need gloves um, to do those types of interactions. And you want to keep those gloves as, as minimal as possible, to interfere as le least as possible. And also, you don't want to have your Vive controllers strapped to your arms the entire time. So going forward, what will be the design of these gloves? Are you going to be tapped directly into a lighthouse sensor? 
Yeah, so um, we're in ongoing conversations with HTC and Valve to get the, the, the lighthouse tracking that we would need, the documentation for this, and working together with them to design a sort of bracelet, mm. a sleek bracelet that you could uh, wear around your wrist that's much less bulky than this. Uh, you also try it out and you mm -hmm. sometimes hit these together and right. that will no longer happen once there is yeah, bracelet design. And then once you have that bracelet design, could you then move and put that on different parts of the body? Like, are you also looking beyond hand presence and arm presence and onto legs as well? Yeah, so that is definitely something that we, we could do once we have that whole bracelet design. We could put it on different, um, different body parts to do whole body tracking. So um, if you put them on the ankles, it's the same type of joint translation up to the hips. And then you also need to track the hips to do this displacement and perhaps also on the breast. And if you put then five sensors there, then you could do full body tracking and that will be really interesting. That's enough data to build a really accurate skeletal model because yeah. you don't need to necessarily move all your toes, but the feet movement, that's yeah. going to be important. So where are you guys right now in terms of development? You showed this at GDC, you're showing it at E3 now. Uh, people have been putting on pre-orders mm -hmm. um, and you have a, a, the next prototype of this almost ready? Yeah, so we have this mock-up with us and uh, you can just put it on and with this mock-up um, this is currently in production. Um, so the PCB is being assembled at the moment. Um, the gloves are being stitched. Everything is put into motion so that we can do factory production and really ramp it up. Because we have a lot of demand for our product. And right now these have a lot of handwork still in them. So it's, we, we also limit the production in that sense. Um, I noticed that the finger, you can have your fingers exposed, which yeah. allow you to use touch screens or type on your keyboard. Indeed. That's nice. And then also feel less resistance here. So I can't actually feel yeah. those, uh, that resistance sensor Indeed. on here. Very cool. And when are you guys planning on shipping? Yeah, so that's going to be end of this year. And that's again going to start with selected partners. And then the beginning of next year, it's going to be the big public release of, uh, of this developer kit. And then in time for that big public release, what do you anticipate the experience that, that early adopters will be able to use on this? Like, how many games and experiences will be out there for Manus VR? Yeah, so the, the first batch that we're going to release on that first year, that's mostly going to be uh, yeah, interesting for developers themselves. We really mm -hmm. want to make those experiences, make those games. And that's why we want to hold out with the consumer version until enough content has been created. Because, yeah, we do need uh, enough interest in that regard. Uh, but there are already uh, demo, the demo game that you play right now, that's going to be uh, further produced by the Pillow Willow Game Studio mm -hmm. that made this game. Um, there are now, from the Early Access developer, there are about 10 game studios that are already making content and, and really sh uh, yeah, like demonstrators to show what the technology can do and how it can help you build better games and more immersive games. Awesome, we well, look forward to it. Hand presence is gonna be a big deal for virtual reality, full body presence eventually, and I'm glad you guys are working on it. Thank yeah. you so much, yeah. it's very nice to meet you. Indeed, glad I'm having you, cool. So that was a pretty cool demo with Manus VR, and I think VR gloves, it sounds like a no-brainer for virtual reality. We want to get our hands in the game, or any type of experience, VR experience. And the way that Oculus and HTC Vive have been doing it have abstracted your hand movements and your finger movements. On the Vive, for example, you're holding physical controllers that you squeeze the grips on or you press a trigger or you press or you put your thumb on the touchpad and that then simulates your hand and the software extrapolates and assumes your hand is in a certain position. That's been good enough so far for a lot of these launch games, but in the future, we're gonna want more precise hand tracking. And of course, the Oculus Touch controller, same thing. It extrapolates your finger movements, your finger positioning from where your thumb and fingers are resting on the controller and how depressed the buttons are. That's not true hand tracking or finger tracking just yet. With gloves, you get closer to that, and the Manus VR systems, it was good, but not perfect. And the demo experiences I tried, like at the, the end of the demo, there was a keyboard in front of me and I couldn't exactly play the piano the way I would want to, but the individual finger movements were there. Um, I think they do need a better positional tracking system as opposed to just strapping the Vive controller onto your forearm, and hopefully they'll get that wrist-based tracking system in the future for positional tracking. 
but really, it's a, it's a tough sell because it's a two hundred and fifty dollar developer kit right now. They want to get into pe people's hands making software, but not a lot of people are going to buy the headset, buy handheld controllers, and buy gloves. So they really need to find the right market for this. I think they need to work with other people working in hand tracking, whether that's Leap Motion or even other based camera based tracking systems, to build up an SDK. So there's a whole range of experiences that can be done. Um, whether it's imprecise hand tracking all the way to very precise hand tracking. I wish them the best of luck and I can't wait to see what they have in the coming years. So we'll have more from E3 2016 on Tested. Until then, we'll see you next time.